I guess we're live uh, tonight. Uh, I had it all set up, and when I pushed uh, uh, go live, it just went completely off. Said it couldn't find the camera for some reason. It's done that a couple times on me now, and I don't know uh, whether it's the weather or or what. It's uh, it's raining and uh, thundering a little bit. I I don't know. It may be lightning. I hadn't seen. And if it has, it hadn't been too many. But uh, we hope that that we're live. I've asked uh, Heather and uh, Ellen back in there to uh, notify me if I wasn't live. And if I am live, I, I don't see anybody on here right now. So uh, anyhow, it's uh, it's good to be on uh, tonight uh, on uh, uh, Facebook Live to bring you the Word of God. We're in our Bible study time on this Wednesday uh, September the 8th uh, 2021 and it's always a, a pleasure to come talk to uh, people about the Lord and talk to people about uh, things God's uh, uh, showing us and uh, some things that God is uh, doing and some things that God's going to do in the hereafter and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight again uh, we're going to read the same text verse that we've always uh, read in this uh, time that we've been studying and that's in Revelation chapter number four so if you would find your places there in Revelation chapter four and we'll uh, we'll finish out this study uh, tonight uh, hopefully we will uh, barring any uh, if I get kicked off or anything we'll just stay off and uh, we'll pick it back up uh, next time okay so let's uh, let's pray and and uh, we'll recognize a few people that's on here and then we'll uh, get into the uh, music and uh, the study of God's Word. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for uh, the truth of your Word. Thank you, Lord, for the promises of God that stand assured. And Lord, uh, the Word of God that is our foundation is our standing uh, stone that one that we can stand upon and know that it is truth. Father, I pray as we've gathered tonight that each one of us may have open hearts uh, and receptive to your word and that we'll take what we have uh, here and the things that we've received tonight and share it with those around about us. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I see you uh, on here tonight is Heather. She's in the living room there. And there's Miss Kathy. Uh, she's a neighbor across the road here. It's good to have her with us tonight. And then there's my brother Carl down in Jonesboro, Tennessee. It's good to have him with us. There's my brother Wayne Parrish down in Jonesboro also. And then there's uh, Brenda. And uh, it's good to see Brenda on there. And as she asked the question, we still have this. We are. Uh, we're still here. And uh, hopefully uh, Ellen will be uh, up to traveling tomorrow. And that, that's the plan of, of coming home tomorrow. Uh, depend on how she does tonight and how she wakes up in the morning. And uh, so we'll be trying to get home tomorrow sometime. And then there's my sister Phyllis. Good to have her with us. And uh, Sandy Glover, that's good to have her with us. And each and every one of you, amen. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's it for right now. Uh, I see uh, Carl says pray for Jenna. That's his uh, daughter. Uh, she's uh, contacted COVID now. Her twin, James, just uh, got over it. Now she's come with it, and so another 10 days of quarantine so you pray for her I pray that it's, it, it, it's not a uh, bad case of it and then uh, all right let's see all right yeah I guess that's uh, all that I see on here right now so you you remember all these and pray for them pray for one another and uh, I seen where the conversation is going it is supposed to rain all day tomorrow and, uh, you know, let's pray that God gives us a safe journey uh, through that rain. I, I hate to drive in the rain, but 
you know, you have to do what you have to do. And uh, Ellen's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow in Bristol. Uh, I mean, not tomorrow, but uh, Friday in Bristol. So we've got to try to get home uh, for that. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to stay here a few days more, but uh, sometimes we have to do uh, things that we don't necessarily like or, or ha wanna do, okay? So you pray, you pray for one another uh, as we study God's Word tonight and see if anybody else has come on. No, that's that's it for right now. So let's go ahead and get started with a couple of songs. Uh, and I picked out these songs for uh, the closing chapters of uh, Revelation. And uh, the first one is uh, by the Spencers entitled Coming Soon. Yes. 
All right. Coming soon. Do you believe it? Live like it. If you believe it. Amen. All right. It's good to have Taylor Fox with us uh, tonight also and Stacy. They're on the road driving someplace. It's hard to tell about those girls. Good to have them with us. Good to have uh, Chris with us again tonight. He just got home, got on here, and uh, pray for him also. God will continue to heal his body, keep him healthy, and uh, pray for one another now. Amen. We need to we need to be praying now because Jesus is coming soon. We're going to talk about that tonight. Okay, and uh, we're going to play one more song, and uh, the name of this one is. By the Gold City, and the title of it is Not John Saul. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? What John Saul? John saw, and we want to talk about what John saw tonight. If you would, turn with us, book of Revelation, chapter number four, chapter number four, Revelation, and uh, you should have already found it. Stacy, keep your eyes on the road, Taylor will tell you what I'm reading. And after this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter let's pray father again as we bow in your presence we do thank you for all your blessings thank you for your mercy your grace your goodness thank you Lord that you made salvation so easy and so simple that a little child could be saved and I pray father that those that's not saved today might Heed the warnings of time. Heed the warnings of uh, the, the saints of God that are spreading the news that Jesus is coming for those that are prepared to meet him. And I pray, Father, 
for all the churches tonight where Christ is exalted and uplifted. You'll bless that service that you'll save souls, strength, uh, strengthen the saints. And I pray, Father, that you'll give enlightenment. I pray, Lord, that you'll give wisdom and knowledge uh, that we might rightly divide the word of truth. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we'd like to say a, a happy birthday to our granddaughter, Alyssa Zollinger, who's having a big 16 today. I think it's 16, that is. <laughs> and uh, we want to wish her a, a very happy birthday. And uh, we want to talk uh, tonight about uh, the things that John saw. And if you kind of rehash what we've talked about, we... Uh, we uh, started off a few weeks ago with the introduction of the actual author of the book of Revelation, and that would be Jesus Christ. He that was alive, was dead, and is alive again forevermore. Uh, the Son of God, He is God manifested in the flesh to take away the sins of the world. He is the actual uh, author of this book of Revelation as is God the author of all the Bible. And so we see here uh, that we went through the message to the seven churches, the Laocian church, uh, church of Ephesus, the Philadelphia church, all the churches, and we told you, uh, you that it could, was uh, probably literally seven churches uh, of Asia. But also, it could be uh, looked upon as the seven church ages and bring this all the way through. And then we began to talk about some other things that we began to talk about the tribulation period, how awful it would be. Period, uh, the tribulation period is a period of seven years. A great tribulation is three and a half years, and that would be the latter part of uh, the tribulation period. And we found that during that tribulation period, there's going to be some bad things happening. Now the first three and a half is going to be some bad, but there's going to appear to be light at the end of the tunnel because of the man that comes in and sets uh, an order to this world during the first three and a half years. The second three and a half years is going to be... Uh, uh, so difficult it, it'll be a time that, of course the uh, the Antichrist is coming on scene uh, on board he's in uh, he's in the whole tribulation period the beast and the Antichrist uh, two are working together and we find that uh, in the, the last three and a half years uh, he's going to set himself up declare himself to be God and he's going to make everybody receive his mark in the right forehand or the right uh, or the forehead or the right hand and uh, we discussed the number of the beast is 666 the mark of the beast nobody knows and uh, it'll be some kind of uh, apparatus, uh, apparatus that'll be able to be read uh, perhaps by machines and to, because you'll not be able to buy or sell without that mark uh, and it is the mark of the beast. You, uh, and if a person does not receive that mark of the beast, uh, they and are uh, caught, they will be beheaded. Okay, uh, the guillotine will be reinstructed, uh, be brought back out, or it'll be some type of death, uh, just uh, a surety. And then last week we was talking mainly about. Uh, the Battle of Armageddon, I told you it was like 176 miles in that valley where the battle is going to rage. And it says during that battle there's going to be blood shed up to the bridles of the horse. Now, is that literally blood or is that dead bodies? That I, I don't know. You know, the, uh, the Bible says blood... And you, we can debate and argue uh, either way, and, and uh, that'll be fine, you know. But uh, it's going to be 176 miles, give or take a, a couple miles. You know, the measurements on uh, the way some people uh, measure it back in those days may be a little variation. 
Uh, the Bible doesn't say 176. It gives us in. It gives it in their measurements there. And uh, so we see that the battle is raging on. And I, I, I got to thinking, you know, what is going on with the saints of God during this time uh, of a great slaughter in the Battle of Armageddon? Well, if you turn, uh, I think it's turned back a, a, a page or so, you'll find that the marriage supper of the Lamb is taking place. We're eating supper. You know, the saints of God, those that had part in the first resurrection, what has happened to them so far is they've stood before the judgment seat of Christ, and now they're having the marriage supper of the Lamb. And so this is coming to an end. Seven years of tribulation is right at the very end of that seven years, while the saints of God are in heaven uh, having supper with, uh, with the Lamb of God. And after supper time, if you look at it real close, you'll find that uh, right after supper time, John said in chapter 19 that uh, he said in verse number 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge. Now, We've already talked about one rider at the beginning of the tribulation period that was on a white horse. And some people uh, claim that that was Christ uh, coming then. It, that wasn't Christ. That was the Antichrist. He was one coming to uh, cause uh, problems here on the face of the earth. Now this rider on a white horse uh, in 19 verse number 11 is the Son of God and this is without a doubt this is no speculation this is no uh, uh, you tell me your opinion I tell you mine this is scriptural it says here uh, it identifies that what he looks like in verse number 12 it ain't going to be pleasant to look at him to start off with it says his eyes was as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vexture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. Okay? And then if you, if you come on down to verse number 16, it says, And he hath on his vexture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's no uh, misunderstanding. That is nothing to interpretation. Take it for what it says. He is God. Uh, it is Jesus, the God of the universe, riding this white horse. And I want you to notice that he's coming in power and uh, in glory. He's coming. This is the second coming of Christ here on the earth. The first time that he came is his second advent. This is the second coming of Christ. And notice what it says here. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, uh, white and clean. Now, we must identify his army, right? You want to know who's his army, who's fighting his battle, uh, who, who's riding with him, to this battle of Armageddon. Well, a lot of people said it's the angels in heaven that comes with him. Well, I believe I believe the angels of heaven is coming, but also it is you and I that are the saints of God that just got through eating supper with him. I believe he looks over and he says, "All right, boys, let's get ready, and we gotta we gotta uh, we gotta go someplace. We've got a task that we've got to take care of, and we are in his army." And we ride those white horses clean and, and uh, clothed in fine linen and white and uh, clean. And it says out of his mouth, out of the Lord, out of the King of Kings, out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword that it should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Okay, so he's coming in power and glory. And you and I are coming with him. And at this battle of Armageddon, uh, there's going to be a great victory uh, for God. And uh, we're not going to strike a blow. We're not going to have to bring a sword or a, uh, or a gun or a weapon of any kind because the Bible tells us that the word of God out of his mouth cometh a sword. And uh, and he's going, it's a, the mighty wine press uh, is going to rule these people, is going to destroy these people. And this is where there's going to be a great slaughter in that valley. Now, if you take another look <coughs> on down in the scripture here, it says one of the angels that was with him standing in the sun, and uh, it, it's amazing how uh, they're not bound by any, uh, that don't have to have a, a rock to stand on, or, uh, you know, they can just stand in the air. Isn't that great? And uh, I don't know whether we'll be like that or not, but it'd be great if we could, wouldn't it? But the angel stood, and he cried with a loud voice. He's calling all the fowls of the air that fly in the midst of the heaven. He says, I want y'all to come on in because you're going to be eating the bodies and the flesh of kings and of all these wicked people. He's, they're going to they're going to have these uh, this flesh for a meal. And I thought about that as I studied on this, and I said, you know, perhaps what's going to happen here, there's going to be so much death, there's going to so many people be killed that there won't be anybody to bury them, uh, that they're not going to have, you know, enough of people. They may bury one here, bury one there, but these fowls of the air are going to come in and devour them. They're going to be fed, uh, and God's feeding them by the flesh of man uh, because of the wickedness and because of the uh, disobedience of man. Now, I want you to know right off the bat that God is a God of love. God loves all men equally. God would have all men to repent and to be saved again. But we know that all men is not going to repent. We know that everybody's not going to turn to God. And so they, some of these are made up of those people. And, and so we find that during this battle of Armageddon, uh, in this great slaughter, something happens here. Three, th uh, three of these, uh, you've got Satan, you've got the Antichrist, and you've got the beast that are ruling in this land during that tribulation time. Now we find it in Revelation chapter number 19 and verse number 20 it says and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet uh, that was uh, wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast you see they're going to be deceived uh, to receive that mark of the beast and uh, and uh, you know people being geared right now to receive anything uh, that someone in authority is offering uh, right now, uh, they make it voluntary, but this mark of the beast perhaps will be voluntary. Uh, but like I said, the consequences uh, of not receiving that mark of the beast will be death if they are captured. Okay, and it says, and them that worshipped his image, those both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. My, what a terrible battle that's going to rage here. And the feast of the birds that's going to come in and pluck the flesh off of these men, these dead bodies, and, uh, and eat. <coughs> okay? But now one... Looks like some good news here. We find that the beast uh, and the uh, prophet or the, and uh, the Antichrist, they are going to be captured and they are going to be cast into a lake of fire. Notice 
They stand no judgment. They've already been judged. They have been found guilty. They have been wanted, uh, found wanting. And they are cast into the lake of fire. Now, when a person dies unborn uh, of Christ today, he, is, is, uh, he wakes up being in hell. Okay, Hell is an awful place, but hell is not the final destination uh, of a lost individual. The lake of fire is. And we notice at this point, the lake of fire has no one in it except the, uh, the, the false prophet and the beast. Okay? What happened to Satan? Well, the angels of God captured Satan. Ain't you glad that God's power is greater than Satan? But the angels of God captured uh, Satan. And uh, we, we're down in uh, chapter 20 now. Uh, the, they capture Satan and they bound him now in chains that, and these chains that he's bound in are chains that God forged that God created that, that even Satan cannot break these bonds and he is cast the Bible says uh, he is cast into the bottomless pit uh, and he laid hold, it says here, and, uh, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the kingdom, uh, bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him. Now notice him being bound is not an eternal bound. He is not captured forever, but he's captured for 1,000 years uh, and chained in the darkness in the bottomless pit chained with the chain of God and he cannot break it and so what's happening now well all peace is going to break out all over the place amen now listen there were some people after the rapture of the church after the battle of Armageddon uh, there are still people living here on this earth. Many did not receive the mark of the beast. Now those that were cast, uh, it says them that worshipped his image, uh, these both were cast alive in, if they had the mark of the beast, they were cast into that lake of fire. They were doomed because they refused the way of God. Now what's happening What's happening now, uh, during this thousand years, this is called the millennial reign with Christ. We'll be ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years, and this thousand years will be unhindered by temptations of the devil. Notice, he's already captured. He's bound. He cannot. Uh, do anything and everybody is living by peace the lamb will lay down with the, uh, the lion and the serpent won't bite you I mean hey uh, there, there's some folks handle the snakes today I'm not even going to handle them during the millennial reign but you could and it wouldn't hurt you amen and it's everything is going to be peace everything is going to be uh, I sort of think it's going to revert back <clears throat> to the way it was in the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect. And, and uh, God is reigning and ruling here with the saints of God that were a part of that first resurrection, okay? And uh, my friend, if you're saved, you'll be a part of that first resurrection. You will be here reigning and ruling with Christ. And let me just say something about that and we'll move on. I, I know it's, it's probably getting late. I, I don't know. But as we as we have come back, uh, there's going to be, uh, if you read some of the parables in the New Testament, you'll find that to him who rules well over just the small things, uh, God's going to give him things to worship with. The greater you serve God today, the more power and authority you will have over the cities uh, when we come back. Amen? And, and uh, that, that's just another reason why you and I need to do what we can do for God. Amen? And so what we find now, 
after this thousand years is up, and and it'll be up uh, before you uh, you can uh, tell it. But what happens then? We find that this will be the last revolt against God here on this earth. The last revolt. God's put up with a lot up until this point, but this is going to be the last time. And what's going to be happening now is after that thousand years, Satan is going to be loose. He's going to be turned loose. And the Bible says that he's going to go out and he's going to gather people from all over the world. And he's going to persuade them, just like he did the angels in heaven back in the, the beginning of sin. He's going to deceive many people and they're going to follow him again. Can you imagine that? Living a thousand years in perfection, in peace, in, in everything just uh, going good, and then to follow Satan's lies. And so what happens now? The Bible tells us that And when the thousand years are expired, verse number 7 of chapter 20, Satan shall be loosed out of the prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. We discussed that. Gog and Magog. I, I believe and uh, most, most people believe Gog and Magog is China and Russia. Okay? To gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the, the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, the beloved saints is those that God has brought back with him to reign and to rule here on this earth. And those during that period of time that remained true to God after Satan was loose. And it says... <clears throat> they had compassed the uh, beloved city around and the saints of God and they were ready to swoop in and, uh, and bring a massacre. But we find that God said, no, that's not going to happen. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So my friend, don't worry. After the thousand year millennial reign, you will not have to do battle anymore. The battle of Armageddon uh, before Jesus came will be the last battle that the saints of God will ever have to fight. Amen. And so it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Are. Notice, they are there. That is in present tense. They did not burn up. They will not burn up. They are in total, eternal torment. Just like hell. The Bible tells us that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. But I'm getting ahead of myself in Revelation chapter number 20 here. It talks about the great white throne judgment. But first we got to get Satan in that lake of fire. And it says, and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. My what an end to an era uh, of one that started off in the very presence of God in heaven, yet turned himself from God into uh, an evil being. God did not create the evil in him. He produced it himself. And then he says, after Satan has been bound, and after this final revolt of the world against God, we find that there is another judgment that is going to go on. Now we, the saints of God, have stood before the Bema seat judgment of Christ, the Bema judgment. That is where we give an account for our works, our stewardship. Here is the great white throne judgment. And in the great white throne judgment, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, 
and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, <coughs> and the dead were judged out of those things writ which were written in the books according to their works. Oh, how sad to stand before this white throne judgment. For at that white throne judgment, all the wicked dead, and when I say wicked, I mean unsaved, unrepented, uh, those that were not clothed in white, and white symbolizes the, the righteousness of Christ. Those that were not born again by the blood of the Lamb shall stand at this judgment and will be judged according to everything that they have ever done in their lives, whether it be good or whether it be bad. They'll be rewarded for the good and will be lose rewards for those things that were bad. And somebody said, why well, uh, uh, going to hell? You know, what could be good about, uh, you know, uh, being rewarded about that? Listen, I believe that there are degrees of punishment in hell. And he that has done much wickedness will serve, a, uh, will be punished with a greater uh, fire than those that have, you know, lived a pretty decent life, but just simply refused to, to receive Christ. Those that denied that they must be born again, uh, but yet did a, a, a pretty good life. Listen, uh, the Bible tells us that, uh, that they that have done much shall receive much. So, there will be different degrees, and I sort of go back to Daniel when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what I kind of figure hell's going to be like, or the uh, lake of fire is going to be a place that uh, has, uh, like uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, and uh, Belshazzar said, I think it was, or uh, uh, no, uh, Nebuchadnezzar said heated up seven times hotter than it's ever been. So I think in this up to seven times there, it's gonna be it's gonna be told. Let me just tell you this: the lightest degree of hell is still going to be unbearable. Uh, it's going to be a place uh, that is a place that their worm dieth not. The smoke of their torment will ascend up forever. I mean, there's no getting out. There's no relief of pain. Uh, the thirst will never be satisfied. The hunger will never be satisfied. And uh, it's going to be a terrible place. Amen. It's going to be a terrible place. And so don't say, well, I've lived a pretty good life. I, I can take a little hell. No, you can't. It's unbearable. Just like these are cast into the lake of fire. We find that those that after this judgment that they stand before, uh, and are judged according to these books. They're not being judged to see if they're saved or not. They're being judged for their works to see the punishment that will be meted out to them. Amen. Now think about it. And it says, "And the sea, not only the rich and the poor. There's no, there's no pre prestige. There's no person that will be overlooked. Every individual that is not saved will stand before Jesus. Amen." Uh, and be judged according to the things that are written in these books. And one of those books that, that are written is the book of life. And one of them is the, is the book of memories. And one of them is the book of tears. There's several books that will be open uh, during this time that they're going to be judged out of. But my friend, the Bible is the main one you need to concentrate upon today and fulfill what's in that Bible uh, today. Uh, if you're not saved, if you're not born again. And it says, And they will judge every man according to their works. Okay? And it says, After after that judgment, it says, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You don't want to be a part of that second death because the lake of fire is the destination for those that die the second death. It's been said the person that's been born twice will die once. And the person that's been one, uh, born once will die twice. And I don't want anything to do with that number two death. That's why we need to make sure that our names are written in the book of life. 
that we have truly received Christ into our hearts and make sure that our destination will not be this lake of fire. And it says, and whosoever was not written, uh, uh, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What a sad thing. Uh, we see that, listen, you say, what about those people that died at, at sea or those people that were burned, uh, burned up or, or cremated even, you know. Every person that has ever existed will stand at one or the other of the judgment, either the judgment of Christ or the judgment of the white throne. Okay, keep that in mind. Every soul shall be judged. And uh, the, the sea's going to give them up, and the, they're all going to just come, you know. And you say, well, how are they going to do that? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know everything about God. But I tell you this one thing, he said it in his word, and I believe it, and that settles it. Don't make any difference whether I understand it or not. And matter of fact, it doesn't even matter whether you believe it or not, as far as it being true or not. Amen? All right, so that's it, huh? Life is over. <clears throat> it, it's done. But listen, we've got chapter 21 to go over yet, and chapter 22, and I'm going to finish it right now. Because I can do it uh, real quickly. The Bible says in verse number uh, chapter 21, John looking up into heaven, he said, I saw heaven and earth. Uh, I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven. And the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. What's going to happen is, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to save that. I'm going to do, we'll finish that next week, okay? I mean, that, there's quite a bit to say on this, so. I'm going to stop right there. I hope, hope we said something might might have uh, guided you, might might have showed you some things. And, and uh, I know most of you already knew all that I've talked about, but it's, it's uh, refreshing sometimes, and it, it's good uh, to hear it again and uh, be uh, revisited with uh, the Scriptures and what's going to be uh, in the hereafter. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to... To, uh, email me, uh, text me, call me, uh, put it on uh, on here, and I'll I'll see if I can get the answer for you. If I can, I'll see if I can find it. If I can't do that, I'll just simply tell you I don't know. Okay, and uh, there's some things that I don't know. I'd I'd be first to tell you there's some things that, and if you ever get around somebody that says they know it all. If I was you, I'd get on my white horse and I'd ride real fast away from him. Because there's nobody that knows it all. The Bible says the secret things belong unto the Lord. Amen? And, and there's some things that are secret. And, uh, and, but we're going to talk uh, next week on chapter 21 and chapter 22. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it out next week for sure. I know I will for sure next week. But uh, I tell you, when, when we was doing this study of Revelation, I was doing just one chapter a, a, a day, and it was about, it was about 50 uh, minutes to an hour long that we was doing it. And, uh, and uh, so I, we're, we're, kind of, we're really condensing it, and we're really going fast through here. And uh, I, I know that we are, uh, are surely missing uh, some things that somebody might, uh, have wanted to know and was hoping I would touch and if I missed it and you want to know uh, please uh, jot it down now if you don't have time to put it on here uh, and so you don't forget it if you're like me the devil steals his thoughts and things right out of your mind sometimes sometimes it's gone while I'm saying it amen and uh, and and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can on it and uh, okay so listen I appreciate each one of you for being here. I appreciate you, uh, uh, your support, your love, your prayers. And, uh, and uh, again, uh, we do ask your prayers tomorrow as we travel and that God will give us a safe journey. And uh, uh, pray for Ellen. Uh, she's still pretty weak, but she's, uh, she's uh, determined she's uh, coming home tomorrow to make that doctor's appointment. And I, I, I sort of like for her to be able to keep it too uh, so we can get the follow-up on her heart, make sure everything's going good. 
and for those that may not know, she had 99% blockage in the widow maker, or in her case, the widow maker, right? And so you pray for her. She's uh, she's doing a whole lot better. She she's still real real weak, and it's uh, not doing a whole lot. She's not doing too much walking, and uh, that's what they told her not to do. Don't overdo it. So you pray for it. Pray for each one of these. Put prayer requests on here. We've seen some as. Uh, coming down with COVID again, we got some that's, uh, they don't really know what's wrong with her uh, uh, right now. Uh, my grand, uh, great granddaughter, pray for her. Got to uh, heal that little body and uh, and touch her, and uh, you know, and pray for Heather, uh, Lexi, I mean, uh, as she's uh, taking care of that little girl and EJ, and you know, and do all that. All right. Uh, I hope everybody's clear. I hope everybody's got uh, an idea of what we're talking about. And uh, I'm just going to close uh, now in a word of prayer. And uh, hope to see y'all real soon. And uh, I will, uh, this Saturday, I'll determine by Saturday uh, if we're going to have in-church services. Uh, uh, I'll talk to some people and down there and get their uh, opinions about it and you know it's uh i i miss being in church uh i i of course i couldn't have been in it up here but uh down there with you but uh i know some folks down there has miss uh, miss church and we love we love the church we love you and uh let's let's pray let's close uh, father we thank you again for this day we thank you lord for the revelation that we've studied tonight and we thank you, Lord, for giving us this vision of things to come and things that's going to happen here on this earth. And Lord, what we've read uh, so far, what we've studied so far, is going to be bad. It's going to be terrible. And I pray, Father, that we, the Christians today, might be busy telling those folk that's not saved about the hereafter. And Lord, we're not trying to scare anybody, but we want them to be aware of what's going to happen that they might make a good decision or choice. Father, I thank you and praise you for all these that came upon our video tonight, for all those that have put requests and, and Lord comments here. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon them. And we'll just praise you for all that you've done for us. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and ask it all in the name of Jesus. We love you. Amen and amen. Well, as the song that we sang, uh, uh, had played tonight, said Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming in power and glory. He's coming. And you know, I don't know when. It could be tonight. So what I say, I say to you, I say to me, I say to all, keep looking up. For Jesus could come today, and I pray that he does.